After a busy and dramatic day on Capitol Hill, I'm joined now by Democratic Congressman Ro Khanna of California. Uh, Congressman <clears throat> Khanna, does Speaker Johnson deserve credit for how this played out? He does. Look, we came into Congress together, uh, and he always cared about civility. He actually led the civility That's pledge. Right. Yeah. Uh, and he, we had one issue, which was give individual votes. Don't lump things together. Uh, and I give him credit for doing this. I would actually vote to table any motion to vacate him. You know, uh, Chairman McCall quoted Churchill. One of the things Churchill said is that America always exhausted every wrong option until doing the right thing. Yeah. And this shows that American democracy still is very strong. Okay, you just said something significant. You said you would oppose the table, the motion to vacate. In other words, you will protect Speaker Johnson's job if Marjorie Taylor Greene and the others go through with their threat to try to remove him. I would, uh, through the end of the term. I expect Speaker Pelosi, uh, Speaker right. Jefferson will be there sure. yeah, yeah. Uh, in 2025. Uh, but look, and I'm a progressive Democrat, and I think you would have a few progressive Democrats doing that. And I disagree with uh, Speaker Johnson on many issues, and I've been very critical of him. But he did the right thing here, and he deserves to keep his job uh, till the end of uh, this term. Now, would you and fellow Democrats who will protect him at this moment ask for anything in return? I mean, do we effectively have... You heard me ask Congressman McCall, a coalition government in the House? I'll leave the negotiations to Speaker Jeffries, but yeah. I don't think everything in politics needs to be transactional. I think here you have Speaker Johnson, who not only put this up for a vote, but he also separated the bills, which I thought was uh, courageous. He let people vote their conscience on Taiwan, on uh, the offensive aid to Israel, on, uh, on, on Ukraine, and uh, I give him credit for that. Now, you were one of the 37 who voted against the funding for Israel. Tell me, tell me more. Tell me why. I mean, I, you, you, why? And was that a high number or a low number in your, in your view? It was a high number. It was a hard vote. I mean, uh, look, it, 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 this was a stance against <clears throat> a blank check to <clears throat> Netanyahu and offensive weapons unconditionally while he's talking about going into Rafa with we, when we know more women and children are going to die. And the reason that you had people like Jamie Raskin, Lloyd Doggett, myself, who have voted for Israel aid year after year and voted for Iron Dome, take this stand, is that we wanted to make it clear that there has to be a change in strategy and no more famine and suffering in Gaza. I'm sure you saw the report in the Wall Street Journal on Friday that the administration, the Biden administration, is uh, considering a billion dollar uh, arms deal uh, with, uh, uh, with Israel. Are, are you concerned about how Biden is handling this? I am in terms of I'm glad that he's moving in the rhetoric, but we can't be shipping offensive weapons when Netanyahu on his own terms is defying the president's State Department, defying the president's secretary of defense. And we know that thousands of people are going to die. And by the way, John, we know that Israel is still using the 2022 uh, authorization and appropriation for Iron Dome, which I voted for. And many of the 37 who voted no voted for that funding. The money yesterday is not going to be used for another two and a half years. So why are we giving this unconditionally to Netanyahu when the entire world is saying that there's famine there, that we need a new strategy, that we need a release of the hostages and peace? So have you, have you given this message to the White House? They know. <laughs> they, they, they've heard from many, many of us. But it's not just progressive Democrats. I mean, and we need an architecture for peace in, in the Middle East. I mean, look, uh, Iran's attacks were totally unjustified. We, I voted to condemn them. Uh, but the reality is, until we have a security cooperation uh, effort, a diplomatic architecture in the Middle East with Iran, with Saudi Arabia, with Israel, you're never going to get peace. And they, we're not going to be able to do what Lindsey Graham wants, which is blow Iran off the map. So what is the alternative? How are we going to get diplomacy and peace? That's where President Biden should be leading as President Obama did. I, I mean, given the Iran attack, attempted attack on Israel, I mean, it was, for the most part, unsuccessful. Uh, but, I mean, how do, you, how do you not support Israel in terms of defense aid at a time when the Iranians, you know, have done something they have never done before, which is try to directly attack the, 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 the Israelis? You have directly from Iran to Israel. You absolutely do, and I supported uh, Iron Dome funding. Yeah. We would have voted for a 
We tried. Dan Kildee introduced an amendment saying, let's just make this about Iron Dome and David's uh, uh, sling in Arrow 3. That amendment wasn't ruled in order. Um, all, many of us have voted for all the defensive aid. I'd still support it, and I'd support the United States using the uh, interceptors to, to knock anything down against Iran. Uh, but what we need is to figure out how we de-escalate, not give them offensive weapons, to now go into Hezbollah to expand uh, the war. And by the way, John, look, I'm for the labor tradition from Ben-Gurion to Golda Meir to Rabin to Perez to Barack. I'm not for Begin to Sharon to Netanyahu. And what you've done is given a far-right Israeli government a carte blanche right now. And, and before you go, there was also the vote on TikTok that was part of this. I know you have opposed efforts to force the sale of TikTok uh, with, with the threat of a ban. Uh, but now it looks like if TikTok is not sold within a year, this bill becomes a law that ByteDance has to either, you know, if it doesn't sell, it's banned in the United States. I don't think it's going to pass First Amendment scrutiny because I think there are less restrictive alternatives. We could have uh, made it a, a crime to transfer Americans' data to an adversarial foreign nation or foreign state interference. But to just ban 170 million Americans or engage in speech and livelihood, uh, the, the federal judge in Montana struck it down. The judges struck it down when Trump tried this. I doubt we'll it survives scrutiny in the Supreme Court. All right, Congressman Ro Khanna, thank you for joining us thank you, this week.